Welcome back to On Points, LOL edition. Ed DeRosa alongside James Scully. And James, uh, we uh, recap the first four Breeders, uh, Kentucky Derby points races leading to the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Last week, thought now would be a good time to look at the Kentucky Oaks contingent. And this group left you speechless. Yes, it did. I mean, we've given the males the love, and now we got to get to talk about these uh, Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies, uh, possible Kentucky Oaks candidates. Both the Road to the Derby and the Road to the Oaks uh, series are underway, Ed. Yeah, we had a uh, game winner and complexity, really east versus west uh, and the Juvenile, but uh, the Phillies much more competitive with some representation from the Midwest as well and Serengeti, Serengeti Empress and Restless Rider, who tops my Oaks list right now. Yeah, and I've got Restless Rider on top as well and yeah, there is a little bit of a, a, a similarity where both complexity and game winner have good speed and we see a lot of these uh, uh, Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies contenders have a lot of speed. Uh, Melafina in California, Jaywalk and Serengeti Empress are all front runners so yeah it looks like uh, we've got a lot of talented horses and a lot of ones that like to race up front too. Yeah and that Alcibiades I think could be a key race because I thought the runner-up Reflect who I also have in my Kentucky Oaks top 10 uh, you know, a real tough trip at Keeneland, that short stretch, mile of 16th. And Restless Rider was better anyway. But here you're going to get the fuller field, a little different configuration. And, you know, if you're looking for a filly outside of the ones who have won some of these big races and figure to take money off those wins, I think Reflect, uh, you know, is going to be the right price in a couple weeks. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I had Reflect in my multi-race bets. I thought she was a little sneaky because I went back and watched the, her previous two races, and I didn't think she got the best of trips in either one of those races. And I did like her late run. Now, she's a trap shot filly, but she clearly thrived in my estimation stretching out the two turns really offered a, a good run and she was three lengths almost three lengths clear a third yeah. and then Alcibiades so I liked how she finished up first time going a route for Keith the Sormo she's a kind of filly I don't know if she'll be good enough to win but she's definitely one that I want to have underneath in any like vertical exotics in the Breeders Cup Juvenile Phillies yeah and the horse she was clear was third was the pace setter so really no one else uh, was coming late for Restless Rider uh, who was phenomenal here in her stakes debut with all the trouble she had still ran away from him so we know she likes churchill uh home court for her as well as serengeti empress so i think the shippers might have a tougher time in the philly juvenile race than they will in the males yeah and i'll, I'll just mention a little bit with bella fina i think there's a little bit of like uncertainty where her odds are i mean we're pretty confident game winner is going to be a solid favorite for baffert in that breeders cup juvenile but the you know Be bella fina comes off three consecutive stakes wins the Sereno the Del Mar debutante and the chandelier but I got to tell you Ed in the, in that Del Mar debutante she got a 68 late pace number I mean it mm. took her like 25 <laughs> seconds to run her final quarter she got an 82 brisk speed rating that's the kind of filly now her, her chandelier was a little bit better like a uh, fig wise but that's the kind of filly that I do want to try to bet against because I'm a little bit like su a suspect on like the horses she was beaten and how fast those races really were and I'm not positive she'll be favored because I do think the maybe the local horses will attract some money certainly though top three choice so if right. you can beat her and especially beat her out of the exotics uh, you're in good shape any uh, any maiden winners recently I threw a Stan console who I thought ran big for Larry Jones at Keeneland on my top 10 just you know looking for some variety they don't all have to be the juvenile fillies horses at this point but any maidens uh, of either sex grab your your eye recently um, well, you know, not, I'll, I'll tell you a horse, uh, that, that Manny Waugh, if he was to mm. wheel back in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile off of that allowance <laughs> yeah. win last weekend for Catalano, there's another speed horse because that horse finally got to trip on the front end and beat a really nice allowance field. Several of those horses in that race were under consideration sure. for yeah. the Breeders' and Maturity. Had run in the Iroquois. Yeah, and yeah. had run in the Iroquois. So that was a really sharp performance and just add more pace to the race. Well, and we know Wayne uh, capable of getting it done with juvenile on Breeders' Cup Day, uh, Phillies anyway, so male not out of the question. I'm going to tell you the reason I asked that question, though, segue, is it feels like now that we're into the, you know, these horses pointing for the Breeders' Cup, and I'm speaking especially of the males now, we've it, it's sort of been quiet on the, the maiden front. You know, mm -hmm. we had the Saratoga and Del Mar races and Churchill, of course, some big numbers and getting excited about the juvenile horses, but I don't know if it's the Justify effect and Magna Moon to a lesser extent or what, 
but there's just been no like flashy, yeah. you know, no horses arrived since really Breeders' Cup season started. And I, I'll tell you one thing I thought was a little disheartening because I, I saw both uh, Lady TNT and Kefefe break their maidens here for Brad Cox, and I really thought a lot of them they both. Good. And they, they both good. came back, and it wasn't that you know they didn't run poorly running second in the Frisette and third or third in the Frisette and third in the Alcibiades. But I mean, you knew midway on the far turn they were done. Right. So they, they didn't run well either. No, yeah, good point. Uh, well, we, it, we, this is a Derby and Oaks focused uh, podcast, but I feel like we'd be remiss if we touched on Breeders' Cup and didn't mention that it got a huge jolt of st star power with Enable uh, now pointing for the Breeders' Cup turf for Judd Mott and John Gosden. Yeah, huge, uh, huge plus. I mean, you know, it, it, she's only run twice this year, too. So I think a little bit of it is, you know, that a lot has been made about how no ARC winners have uh, won the Breeders' Cup turf in the same season. You know, Found came back the year after she won it right. and won the ARC. But, uh, a lot of them are, are potentially might have been a little bit over the top as well sure. at the end of the season. Now, Enable, I mean, he came back, Austin did, gave her a poly track race, and then ran her in the art. To me, she might have still been a race short that day. So it is a huge boost. She is an international superstar, and she's got a chance, you know, if she can carry her form to really put on a show for the fans. Yeah, and if she wins the Breeders' Cup turf and Winks loses the Cox Plate, she has a chance at world's best on the uh, on the Long Jeans rankings, too. Not that that's the big prize people go for, but it is a talking point since they're obviously never going to face each other. Uh, but, yeah, I think it's big, and I think your point, you know, the arc is so often the culmination of a season for so many horses, and then, yeah, you try the Breeders' Cup, and I certainly appreciate horses who do that, Dylan Thomas, Golden Horn, many others who have failed to, to complete the double, but this just feels different because of the seasoning. And to a, another extent, we see it with the Breeders' Cup. For so long, horses who had won a Breeders' Cup race, you know, didn't win the Cigar Mile or didn't win the Clark, or, you know, they'd start again in that season and wouldn't win because they already had their big prize. As seasons have gotten shorter, that's changed. Uh, we have had horses in very recent history go on and win after the Breeders' Cup. So the arc is sort of that European parallel. And she all of a sudden has now become the most likely winner on the card, I would say. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, just, uh, I mean, she, she had a phenomenal three year old season. I think she was a little bit out of, you know, not being racing for most of the year. People had forgotten about her a little bit. But, you know, that, like I said, to go a mile and a half off of, you know, with a huge fitness question coming into that race was phenomenal. And you just got to think, you know, she's, she, she's like, like I said before, a candidate to keep uh, moving forward off that yeah, race. No question with fantastic connections to boot. So, right. you know, no concern there. All right. Well, uh, pre entries next week. So we will have mm -hmm. a better mm -hmm. sense of the juvenile, juvenile Phillies field and might even touch on some of the turf events for two year olds. Because right. last year we had Mendelssohn, Catholic Boys, uh, a few others uh, out of that. Uh, mm -hmm. Snapper Sinclair flirted with the Triple Crown Trail ended up being a pretty important race to pay attention to on the Triple Crown side of things, too. So, yeah, uh, and no those, those pre -entries. Absolutely, yeah, Kat, like you said. And even, like, you know, you, you're going to be counting on having even good fillies in the uh, juvenile fillies turf, Lady yeah. Eli and um, 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 who just... Rushing right, Fall. Rushing Fall. Yeah. Yeah, so a lot of a lot of quality in those races. Looking forward to talking about those. Yeah, Ed. plus Breeders' Cup Juvenile Sprint, which, you know, maybe horses aren't ready to stretch yeah. out, but... It, I love that race by Strike Silver in the Indian Summer at Keeneland. All right. Well, we'll, <laughs> we'll get plenty of picks over the next two weeks. Uh, we'll talk pre-entries next week. Uh, join us then.